Verse 1 to 8, and then 9 to 14, 15 to 20, and then 21, 22. How come I divide it like this? Because each section starts with, "O、oh、Lord, O、oh、Lord, O、oh、Lord, O、oh、Lord." So four cries to the Lord, and of course、uh, the last section, verse 21, 22, is like a. Conclusion to, and、uh, so the psalmist continued to cry out to God, "O、oh、Lord, O、oh、Lord, why I was dead?" Because he was in a great pain. As we read the psalms, we also see that this is like a psalm of repentance. The beginning of the psalm, it says. A psalm of David to bring to remembrance. In the whole book of Psalms, there are only two psalms that are for the purpose of bringing into remembrance. Psalm thirty-eight and Psalm seventy. So, what did the authors, the psalmists, wanted us to remember? Actually, the psalm was. Also written to himself, that、uh, the psalmist remind himself of something. Today, after we read these four sections, we should have the answer. And that this psalm has something to remind us, so that we can remember. And I think the reminders are also very important. So let's look at the first section. Oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure, for your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There's no soundness in my flesh because of your anger. Not any help in my bones because of my sin, for my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. My wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. I'm troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I'm. Go mourning all the day long, for my lungs are full of inflammation, and there's no soundness in my flesh. I'm feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. So we see that、uh, it's interesting. The psalmist wasn't saying that Lord did not rebuke me or chasten me, but he asked the Lord not to do that in God in His wrath. In his hot displeasure, you know that discipline is needed, and the psalmist he knew that. It's right that you discipline me, but do not do that in your wrath. Do not discipline me, chase me in your hot displeasure, which means, as you discipline me, please do that with mercy and grace. Well, isn't that strange? Just like the child is telling the father,、um, when the father asks his him to take out his hand, and the father wanted to hit him with a ruler because the son has done something wrong, and then the son may say, "Hit me lighter." And then the the father may wonder, "Oh, what should I do now?" It's like. Now the son knows he's wrong,、um, but I said I'm going to punish already. So okay, what do I do? I just hit him lightly, and that was the interaction of the psalmist and God. Also, I know you want to discipline me, but please do that with your grace and mercy, so that when your hand is lifted up high. Ready to discipline, it will be、uh, put down lightly. So the psalmist was crying out to God, and why did the psalmist cry out to God? What kind of situation was he in? Well, because God's arrows pierce him 
deeply, and God's hand presses him down. What does that mean? It means、uh, he knew that he had sinned, and he felt very convicted, like the arrows pierced into his heart, and God's hand. Was like pressing him down, and he couldn't stand the guilt. And that's how we also may feel when we struggle with sin and are convicted deeply. Our conscience and the word of God would also tell us that what we've done is wrong. Have you experienced that? Especially,、um, you fall down because of the same kind of weakness. We feel really bad. Oh, how come I do that again? I know I shouldn't do it. Why did I do that again? Especially some addiction or gambling. So I said I would not do that again. I said I would cut off my fingers. Should I also cut off my toes? I said I would not do it. Why did I do that again? I don't want to lose my temper. I don't want to throw things anymore. I don't want to hit. But why did I do that again? So these things made us feel really bad. We feel that arrows pierce us deeply. Oh, God's hand presses us down. It's like because of sin and the discipline of God. The psalmist said, "There's no soundness in my flesh." Because of your anger, and because maybe of the sin, the psalmist has some skin problems in his eyes. He ended up like that because of God remembering his sin. So, because of the sin, he had a gap. With God, and even his body has some issues. Maybe that was also God's discipline to help the psalmist think about his sin, and、um, because he was sick, he felt like being tortured. Even there was no health in his bones, he felt very uncomfortable.、Uh, maybe. Not just physically, but psychologically, he couldn't sleep. He couldn't eat because so, there was so much pressure. So he has skin problems and even pain in his bones. He couldn't sleep, and he said, "For my iniquities have gone over my head." The sin was like pressing upon him. It's like he had no strength to resist it. He couldn't bear the sin anymore. The sins have consequences, and he didn't know how to deal with that. Is that because of my foolishness? My wounds are foul and festering. The sins are very deep. So. There were wounds, and even it was festering. They were festering, and he could also see that sin. It came out, and he was really tortured. He felt tortured. He was greatly troubled. So he cried out to God. He cried out to God. Struggling greatly, he couldn't face it. He was mourning all the day long, and that was the situation. If if we're deep into sin, and that is also a necessary process. God let that. God let us go through that. The purpose was. And God let us to go through that. The purpose is for us to repent. So the question is, do we have wisdom? Do we know that that process helps us to return and repent? We have a saying in Chinese: "A little illness is a blessing." 
because maybe we have been too busy, and our body cannot sustain that. When we have a little illness, we can pause and think about our future, adjust our pace of life, think about what we can do, what we should do. And so, when we felt so heavy, when under sin, maybe it's God's way to help us repent. So, the discipline is not the goal. The goal is for us to repent, and so that's why Psalm thirty-eight is called a psalm to bring to remembrance. We should remember that we've been through a difficult path, and when we had sin, it was terrible. We were being tortured. So we must learn a lesson. So you see,、um, where we are still in sin, it's like arrows piercing us, and God's hands pressing us. There's no soundness in our flesh, even no health in our bones. There's wounds. We have wounds like that are foul and festering. We have all kinds of problems physically. Emotionally, psychologically, you know, we feel that's a heavy burden. We cannot quiet down our hearts, and our body, soul, and spirit are all invested.、Uh, we must face this kind of feeling honestly. It's because of sin. So God disciplines us. Punishes us, and the psalmist understands、uh, that it was a discipline. So let's look at the second section, verse nine. Lord, all my desire is before you. And my signing is not hidden from you. My heart pants, my strength fails me. As for the light of my eyes, it has all so gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague, and my relatives stand afar off. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long. But I, like a deaf man, do not feed here, and I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus I am like a man who does not hear, and in the, whose mouth is no response. So it's like he didn't hide himself from God. Before God, we should not. Pretend because God knows everything. We cannot hide anything from Him. And the psalmist just brought everything to God. He said, "You know all my desires. You know my signing. And when my heart pants, which means my heart is unrest, and my strength fails me, and I don't have light in my eyes." I give you my helplessness, Lord. You know, in this weakness and sin, I have no strength. I cannot even return. I know I have sinned against God, but I have no strength to overcome this sin. I cannot go through this discipline. My heart is panting. So. I cannot help myself. He said, "My loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague. My relatives stand afar off. Just like everyone left me. When you are under sin, no one can help you." Even though they love you, they cannot help you. No one. 
can help even they love you so much. We must face our sin ourselves, and because our opponent is God, we need to face ourselves and face God. And those who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long. Which means those who love us cannot help us. But some people even throw stones at us when we are in trouble, and they harm us more when we are in bad condition. Why? Because when we don't have sin, we don't have. A stronghold, a breach for the enemy. But when we're in sin, the enemy can find the breach and attack us and harm us. So the psalmist was being、um, like a attack from. Within and outside, those who, whom, those who love him, and also those who hate him. But the psalmist said, "But I, like a deaf man, do not hear, and I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear and whose mouth is no response. We may we have experienced that when we are stuck in sin or." Trapped in a weakness, a lot of、uh, accusations or、um, a lot of condemnations may come, and people may also scold us or blame us. Maybe, oh, you are a cell leader, you are a pastor, you are. Why would you do that? And the psalmist said, so he would not listen to those words. He did not defend himself when he was struggling so much in such a disaster and misery and attack. He chose to be silent because he knew that the enemy could attack him greatly because he had sinned. That was a Bridge in himself. So then, the psalmist knew clearly the relationship between sin and us. If we open up a breach because of sin, then the enemy can attack us. Otherwise, the enemy cannot attack us. And so, there's nothing we can say. We cannot shift the blame to others. We are responsible. We have not done well. So it's not because of God or because of others. It's our own self. And. A lot of times, when in this situation, we may still blame God and say, "You're not just. You don't love me. You don't help me. We give all the responsibilities to God, thinking that God should help us." But the psalmist's perspective is different. He knows that all is because of his own problem, and he couldn't. Bear the consequence, so he just asked God, cried out to God, to remember him, to give mercy and grace when God disciplines him. So he called this psalm a psalm of remembrance. He knew that God will help him. The others cannot help him because he deserved those consequences of sin. So we need to remember. When we are in sin, we face such a trap, such a condition, a misery. But is there no way out? 
Let's read the third section, verse fifteen to twenty. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord, my God. For I said, Hear me, lest they rejoice over me. Lest when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity. I'll be anguished over my sin. But my enemies are vigorous, and they are strong. And those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those also who render evil for good, they are my adversaries because I follow what is good. So the psalmist said, "When he was in weakness, what can he do? Look up to God. God is our only way out." So this is、like、kind of paradoxical. The discipline comes from God. Just like、uh, you see the father holding a rod and wants to hit you because you've done something wrong, and our、uh, instinct reaction would be run away from the rod. We want to go away from the source of discipline, but the psalmist, on the on the contrary, he said, "I look up to you," which means in the discipline holds onto God even more. That's the key. We need to know who's our opponent. We end up like this because we've sinned against God. Because we have a problem with God, so we have all these troubles. We are sick. We don't have rest in our hearts. We feel tortured inside. So we must go back to God and do、uh, what's opposite to our flesh. Our flesh may think that okay, I will neglect God. I will go to the world. I will avoid God. I run away. Sometimes we're like that. Oh, it's so difficult to believe in Jesus. Let me not believe in Him. No. In the contrary, what's the solution? When we feel tortured, we find it difficult. We should have hope in God and hold on to Him. When we do that, then the discipline will go away. Just like. When father wants to discipline a child, when a child says, "I know I'm wrong, I know you're right to discipline me, but please hit me not so strongly, hit me lightly." Well, which father would hit the son strongly after the son said such a thing? And the father would not be angry anymore because the child already knows he's wrong. So the psalmist did the same. He said, "I know you will hear my prayer. You will take away all my difficulties, so I can be built up again." And then he said also, "Why, Lord, should you hear me? Because I don't want my enemies." To rejoice over me when my foot sleeps, they said something bad and terrible. And she, when the psalms, psalmist sinned and fell into the weakness, not only the psalmist was shamed, but but then the enemies also shamed God behind. Just like、uh, people would say, oh, the Christians say. Fall down, and they will mock our God too. So the psalmist said, "Save me, hear me! Don't let the enemies shame me and shame you." And so he said, "I'm ready to fall, and my soul is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity. I will be in anguish over my sin." So the key is how do we face our sin? The psalmist said, "I need to confess my sin. I will not run away or, or hide away. I want to take out my sins and confess my sins, so that the sins are exposed to light. Sometimes it's the same when we are in weakness. When we want to cover it up, we feel worse. When we want don't want others to know." Then we feel even worse. It's the same in a company when we work, when we lie. It's the same. We need to cover up. 
more、uh, the lives with more lives. And but if we just expose everything, as things are exposed to light, then there will be solutions, and you feel relief. Have you experienced that? The psalmist said, "Coming before God, I must confess my sins. I will be in anguish over my sin." I will be sad because of my sin, because that anguish actually helps us to face our sins, to expose our sins. Otherwise, my you will experience that the enemies are vigorous and are strong, and those who hate you wrongfully will be multiplied. Because if you have sinned and you don't face it, the enemy's power will be more, and you cannot overcome it. And those who render evil for good, the adversaries would be there against us, because the enemy knows that when we struggle in sin, that's a kind of paradoxical. Why would the psalmist struggle like that? Because I follow what is good. Good refers to God. There's no one good except God. So actually, we want to follow God. We pursue God. And so God's word is in us, and that's why we feel tortured. What does that mean? When we sin, when we have weakness, do we know that? Yes. So we feel tortured inside because there are two voices inside. One voice that is okay, the whole world is like that, and、uh, escape from tax. Well, that's normal. Everyone, every businessman would do that. Otherwise, we can earn money. But then there is another voice inside telling us not to do that, like addiction or. Um, there may there may be a voice inside. Stop playing video games. Yes, we actually know that. Otherwise, we won't feel tortured inside. So actually, we are pursuing God and goodness inside. That's why we end up like that. On the other hand, it's like we cannot overcome it, and then our enemies become stronger, and then we have more addiction. So we are under such a stretch and tension, and so it says here we need to know the characteristics of sin. We must turn to God and confess our sins, so that God's light can come into our lives. I、just confess, I cannot overcome the addiction. Lord, I trust in you. I'm my only hope. When we're in sin and we see that, then we can have a way out. So, Lord, that's why the psalmist cried to to God, and that's what the. Psalm of Remembrance wants to remind us. And the last section, verse twenty-one, twenty-two. Do not forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. We know that、uh, we cry out to God; His salvation will come quickly. So when we are in sin, to remember. Do not run away from God's discipline, but on the other hand, we should hold on to God, confess our sins, and do not avoid run away. Otherwise, the sins may come after you more. It's just like a beast. If we not face our beast and confess our sins, then the sin becomes like a dog, and then a lion and a dinosaur wanting to. Um, engulf you, but if we can face God, look to God and face our sins and、uh, confess our sins and our weaknesses, cry to God for help, then 
then uh, even the thin big as dinosaur once exposed to light will vanish. So remember, when we sin with weakness, do not run away from God, but go to God, confess our sins. Don't let the sins torture us inside. God is the way out. He has mercy and grace. When we confess our sins like that, God, salvation will come. Amen. Lord, you're the one who's full of mercy and love, and the righteous one. So、uh, we come to you. He said, "You're Jehoshua, 2022. You're the one who will save us." So today, let our hearts return to you again. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Today, Pastor Dino through Psalm 38 is telling us when we're in trouble, there are two great tips: we must face our sins, and we should look upon God. So, right now, let's hold on to these two tips. When we're in trouble, the most important thing first: we need to face our sins. We should confess before God. We are weak, even though we are believers. We always go to church. We are even in ministry, but we must confess that in our mind, in our heart, in our relationships, we still have sinned against God. Just like in this psalm, my.、Uh, Because of my sin, there's no health in my bones. For my iniquities have gone over my head, like a heavy burden. They're too heavy for me. So let's come before the Lord to lay down our pride. Let's examine our hearts. Let's、uh, not find justification ourselves, but let's come before God, examine our hearts. Where we can still repent, we can return to God. Let's take this grace and opportunity. Let's reflect, examine ourselves. If you feel that God's sight is shining upon you, reminding you what you have sinned against God, let's return to Father God and claim His forgiveness. Lord, we confess our weaknesses to you. Like I am sorry, I don't know how to love and express love. Sometimes I'm I'm emotional and impatient, and so I confess that to you. I pray that you forgive me. And also in Jesus' name, I ask that you forgive all the brothers and sisters as they confess their weaknesses and sins. We confess that to、uh, proclaim that you are. Just and righteous. When we confess our sins, you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, help us always come to you, be humble, and face our own sins. May you give us such a grace of forgiveness and cleanse us by your blood, precious blood. Help us not to be afraid to face our own sins, not run away from our sins, and not just point to others. But we can examine ourselves every day, that we can have clean heart, a pure heart, and clean hands. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, the second tip is to look upon God. Psalm thirty-eight, verse fifteen. For in you, O Lord, I hope you will hear, O Lord, my God. Verse twenty-one. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. We know that when we look upon God again, when we trust Him again, God's power will come to us. And recently, a mother. Church has a family. 
we need to go to desolation camp because the the child has a classmate infected. But I'm thankful every day. I see on the Facebook they're not complaining about the food or the place. But every day they praise the Lord and report peace. And they said they will build up the highest altar for God and praise God that、uh, the the lunch box is tasty. So I'm thankful. They also. Said something. We cannot change the circumstance, but we can change ourselves. How we face the adversary, and I can see that、uh, in the trouble, they learn to hope in the Lord. If they have to stay there for two weeks, even for the Chinese New Year,、oh, that's not easy. But we know that so change your attitude. God can give us a peace that transcends our understanding and even the contentment and joy. God will give us a different perspective. So now, let's pray for ourselves. Put our hand on our hearts and pray in tongue, Lord, with your mind. Ask the Lord to give us the trust. And no matter what we face, we can stay strong in the Lord and hope unto Him. No matter what we face, we know that we want to look upon God. We proclaim that we will trust in Him. Lord, give us such faith when we cannot change the circumstance, but in Jesus' name. We ask that you give us the spiritual understanding and perspective, so we always have hope in the wisdom from God. Lord bless us and lead us in 2022. Experience your protection and salvation, Lord. We thank you. Hear our prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And then now, let's continue. To pray for Hong Kong, and we know that there were 107 new confirmed cases yesterday, and there were seven unknown sources for the cases in Kwai Chung Estate. There are 334 cases, 58 new cases, and in one building there were 45 cases. We know. There are ten buildings、um, that were found a lot of garbage mountains, and there were over forty workers, and they had to be isolated. The cleaning staff, and so the government needs to find other cleaning company because that particular. Cleaning company that was working there had all the all the staff had to be isolated, and usually we think that、uh, well we take it for granted when others help us to take away garbage. But when problems rise up, we know that actually there are cleaning、um, staff helping us to. Serving us, so let's pray for them. These cleaning men, cleaning workers, they may not receive the full salary when they stop working, and their families may also be very concerned and worried. Do they do they have enough? Protection,、um, like the protective clothes, can they reject to work if they don't have enough protective equipment? Actually, in every area, every district, 
all the cleaning workers have more jobs to do. So let's pray for them right now. We come before you, Lord. We know that you love love them so much. The grassroots of the society. When they stop working, they also have no income, so they are afraid and have a lot of worries. There are a lot of difficulties and pressure. There is such a great increase of workload, and we come before you. We confess to you, and we pray for grace for them, the cleaning workers in Hong Kong, that you will comfort them and their family, protect them. You know that is not easy. We pray for them because you take care of the underprivileged. Your love will circle around them when it's not easy for them. Lord, we are also willing to care for them, to send our greetings to them. We know. We have friends who are also in these、uh, jobs or their family. So let's pray for them. Share your love and grace and mercy to them. We're willing to be the channel of blessings to them. Lord, okay. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer. Amen. And also, we pray for. Car accidents. Yesterday, around ten thir ten p.m. in the airport, there was a car accident hitting a worker. And this morning at six in Yunnan, Tinsuiwei area, also、uh, there was an accident. Hitting a woman, and and she died. This old lady. So let's continue to pray for the professional、uh, cars.、Uh, they maybe they're very busy in changing,、uh, working longer hours. So they may be tired, and so it's easier to have car accidents. So let's pray, especially for the professional drivers. Especially pray for those who、um, who are in who has this job. We pray for them by names.、Uh, we pray for the professional drivers. We know that、uh, maybe it's not easy. A lot of work. You feel pressured and worried. We pray that you give them peace. For all the professional drivers. Give them peace and them angels on their ways to protect them, protect the transportation in Hong Kong, especially in the end of the year. We see there are a lot of car accidents. We come before you, cry out to you, Lord, protect everyone, because every day our lives is in your hand. So we pray that the one who saves us come to us, come quickly to us, make haste to help us, help Hong Kong, help the professional drivers come haste to us. O、oh、Lord, my salvation, let's send a message to send our greetings. Thank you in for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm thirty-eight, verse fifteen. For in you, O Lord, I hope you will hear, O Lord, my God. Verse twenty-one, twenty-two. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. The Lord is our salvation. The Lord is our help. The Lord will not forsake us. He'll be far from us, but he will come quickly to help us. Let's pray for ourselves and for Hong Kong. 
Lord, in your name, we proclaim Psalm 38. These verses will be fulfilled in Hong Kong, especially 21:22. Because you will not forsake us, you will not be far from us. So we cry out to you to come quickly to us. Lord, save Hong Kong, help Hong Kong, so that we can return to you from COVID-19, and may our life, normal life, be restored quickly. Lord, give us grace, help us individually too, so that we can. Hope in you when we return and repent from our sins, confess our sins, and hold on to you. Hope in you, Lord. Your salvation will come to us. Today is 2022, Jehoshua. You will save us to the end. So, Lord, we pray that you will use us to give this salvation to those around us. Lord, may you help us, strengthen us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Our morning devotion will end here. May the Lord bless you all.